If you give me any date before the year 2000, I can instantly tell you what day of the week it was. Bollocks. <laughs> the... Is this something you learn, or is this a kind of, you know, Rain Man type thing? No, no, I had to... That's, well, I had to learn... You learned how to do it? Learned the system. What's, what's, what's the, the system? system? The system is, uh, what you do is you actually just learn... <laughs> learn... <laughs> Trying to think of a system. And what you're planning for is you, you actually just learn what day of the week every day is. I can't go back to like 14 BC, <laughs> right? right? But I can I can do it right the way back to the sort of 1920s, 1930s. And what you do is you learn a midway. So you learn the 90, you learn one particular pit point in 1955, three months in 1955, you learn it off by heart those 90 days. And then there's a calculation that you can do to plus or minus. What's that calculation? Take a day, one of from your, you know, your expert period the, Might... around Suez or whenever it yes. was. Well, you have to give me the exact year, otherwise it'll be too well, different. Okay, I, I don't mind. Right, the 14th of May, 1955. Well, hang on, 14th of May, 1955. <laughs> <laughs> Tuesday. 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 Right. <laughs> and so, how do you extrapolate from your knowledge of that to go yeah. back to the 1920s to the 23rd of June, 1927? It's dead simple. Yep. It's seven. Hang on. To the power of two. <laughs> right. Then you take away 10% unless right. it's a leap year. And is it a leap year, 1955? Uh, of course not, you idiot. That was 54. And no, of course. Okay. This one year, that is 55 a leap year. <laughs> Seven to the power of two. <laughs> seven to the power of two is 49. Minus, minus 10%. 10 is 4.9, so you've got 44.1. Correct. I was going to say, that's, that's not a day of the week. That's I haven't 40. done it yet. 40. It is. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. 40. Then you round it Thursday. up or round it down, which is 44. Key of the door, 21. Two and one is three. Sunday's the first day, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. <laughs> oh, so, David. Lie. <laughs> You're saying it's a lie? OK, Lee, are you telling a lie? Of course I'm telling a lie. <laughs> <laughs> Three members of the Cabinet subscribe to my Twitter feed. Please explain for, for some of the less with it crowd <laughs> what a Twitter is. Well, it's a, Twitter is a website where you can essentially leave messages of up to 140 characters. All right. Okay. Um, and no longer. OK, uh, Lee's team. You made it sound so dynamic. <laughs> I can see why it's so popular. I can't. Why did you sign up? Because someone on it was impersonating me. What? Someone on Twitter was pretending to be me and putting messages on it, like going to peep show production meeting, everyone there is an asshole, <laughs> which I did not wish to be published under my name. And who are, the, who are the cabinet ministers? They are... Uh, Andy Burnham, the oui. Culture Secretary, Alistair Darling, who is the Chancellor of the Exchequer. <laughs> <laughs> Can you say and Exchequer like that again? Yeah. Chancellor of the Exchequer. <laughs> and Alan Johnson. If this is true, is it any wonder the financial crisis we're in? <laughs> How many followers do you have? About 27,000. What sort of information would you be giving that's so interesting that they're going to sign up to follow you, of all the people in the country? I think you can follow more. That sounded really confrontational. You really are full of, you really are full of nasty <laughs> A very popular young man in the current entertainment scene. And a lot of people enjoy his work and they want to get close to him and they follow him. He's been on question time. He's been on I'm question time, I'm a major time, political force, Charlie. <laughs> He's... Oh, wait, wait, let's have a guess. It's a lie. I th That's I a think lie. it could be true, I think it could be true. It's a lie. It's a lie. If anybody is talking through the internet to cabinet members, it's Dave Mitchell. He's not talking. He never. I'm on that. He never. Blow, he doesn't really say much. You're frankly, you're boring on there. <laughs> I think it might be true. Are you I, saying true? I, I, you can say that if you want to lose the game. <laughs> okay. It's, <laughs> it's a lie. Okay. No, it's I a think lie, it's a lie. Charlie, it must be I'm a lie. I don't know. Absolutely anything. convinced it's a lie. It's I true. think it's true, and I'm I'm going to go with you, you two, but particularly you, if it right. goes wrong. <laughs> oh, okay, you're saying it's a lie, David. Is it true? It is a lie. Oh. <laughs> Uh, it is a lie. A very big lie. Uh, there are not three members of the Cabinet who subscribe to David's Twitter feed. Uh, I, myself, don't get all the fuss about Twitter. I think people have forgotten the simple pleasure of just sitting down and talking to friends on Skype. <laughs> <laughs>
I kept my car running for two months by cracking an egg into it every day. David's team, is that possible? When you say cracking eggs into it, where do you mean in? In the petrol tank or in the... Oh, in the petrol tank. Are you a fool? <laughs> do you know nothing of cars no, and eggs? No, not egg-running egg cars. Well, <laughs> if you, in a car you have um, a radiator. If the, if the radiator cracks, it, all the water comes out. Yeah. But, interestingly, if you put an egg in the radiator, <laughs> it, it goes... it congeals. And it seals the hole in the radiator because the, the egg cuts and... So why didn't you go and get it fixed? Well, yeah, that's a good much. question. You see, Trini, I couldn't afford it. So I thought, it's about 100, 150 quid to get the radiator replaced now. It was my first car. So the eggs it, must have cost what? you 100 quid. No, no, they weren't free range, darling. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 I'm talking really so you did, a, did you do an egg a day? Cruel and cheap, they used to be called. Did you do an egg a day? <laughs> I can pump out 50 a day, was the advert. <laughs> <laughs> Who needs to move his head? That's where the other <laughs> <laughs> Who needs to move his head? 50 a day, that's me. So what do you think? Is it true or is it a lie? Can't be true. What do you think? I think it's a lie. Okay, okay. lie. You're saying it's a lie. Uh, Lee, tell us the truth. It is, in fact. True. Oh, yes. Very okay. good. It's, uh, it's very, very true indeed. Lee Mack's motto is if there's a job worth doing, it's worth doing haphazardly with some farm produce. <laughs> the only concert I have ever been to was by Shirley Bassey. <laughs> and where was that? It was at the bit of Wembley that's not a football stadium, but is nevertheless a very large well, the room. tube station. <laughs> uh, no, no, I, I think the arena. The arena? The arena. Mm -hmm. And did you go... who did you go with? I went with uh, a friend of mine called John. <laughs> and uh, what period was this? Uh, it was the 18th century. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was about seven or eight years ago. Was she surprisingly good? She was pretty good. She was incredibly loud. <laughs> <laughs> you don't expect that, do you, at a concert? Can you remember any of the songs she sang? I think she sung... I think she sang all the, like, gold things. She definitely sung Diamonds Are Forever as well. Yeah. And I can't help think... thinking you know nothing about Shirley Bassey, but you've watched a lot of James Bond films. <laughs> I can't believe you've never been to a classical concert. OK. <laughs> <laughs> so, what do you think, Lee? It's a... Uh, I'm, I'm well, just a curious I don't one. Know. I, I can believe... David doesn't strike me uh, as the type of person that... Would go to loads of gigs. Yeah, so it is possible that he's not been to a concert before. It's a lie. Yeah. What do you think, Gabby? He's very clever, though, isn't he? Well, he's not that clever. I mean, he's... <laughs> It's all a facade. The I'm gut. actually the clever one. The gut. This is an act. <laughs> when we go backstage, I'm like, David, marvellous performance, and he's like, ah, oh, they fell for it again, didn't they? <laughs> so we're saying... I think, like you, uh -huh. it's a lie. OK, my team say it's a lie, so we'll say that that is indeed a lie. You're saying it's a lie. OK, David, is it true? It is true. No. Oh. I can't eat custard creams because they remind me of Spencer Whitfield, who bullied me at school. <laughs> David, what did Spencer Whitfield do to you? He uh, pinned me down with his mates and he forced-fed me custard creams. Why not just beat you up? Why did they want to feed you <laughs> custard creams? Did you look thin? <laughs> we, the kind of lessons we had was, um, believe it or not, in secondary school, right, We'll go around the class and you've all got to tell us your favourite biscuit. One you like, one you hate. And what this... subject was this? <laughs> it was home economics and... Uh... Did you do A-level home economics? No, I didn't do A-levels, obviously. Look at me. <laughs> what do you think the effect of A-levels on the face are? <laughs> you went to, if you were a boy, you couldn't do home economics, you would have been doing woodwork. Yeah, no, I think you're mixing me up with the film Kez. <laughs> <laughs> well, it was a choice between kestrels and coal. I was allowed to choose home economics. You chosen? Level. Why did you choose that subject above kestrels or coal? Do you know why? Genuinely? I thought it was about money. I thought I'd learn how to use money in a sensible way. And I got in there and it was uh, full of the uh, kids that wanted to do cooking and needlecraft. Who were big bullies. <laughs> <laughs> so, David, what are you going to say? I don't think it's true, really, but... No. Um, you, you're pretty you're it's set on, on it yeah. being a lie. OK, fair enough. Um, uh, Lee, I, is, is it true or is it a lie? It's a lie. <laughs> <laughs> 
The screensaver on my phone is a photo of my living room carpet. <laughs> <laughs> You've got a mobile phone. Yeah. <laughs> Bloody London for you, eh? <laughs> Please. Is, is he telling the truth? Well, if anyone's capable of this. <laughs> what colour is the carpet? Sort of, um, a very bright beige. <laughs> This might be boring. I'll jazz it up a bit. Yeah, okay. <laughs> why, why would you do that? Why would you take a photograph of your carpet? Well, um, I've got <laughs> a mobile phone which is the same model as a phone as, that many people have. Yes. And, and I needed a way of distinguishing it from other people's. You know, it might be left at a table in a meeting and then you pick it up and go, oh, yes, I immediately recognise that because it's the one with the car Picture carpet. Of the carpet. <laughs> Carpet. I might have done it I know, he's done ago. something on that carpet. Oh, he has it, has he? Yeah. That's why he's got it on his phone. Oh, not again! I told you, I'll rub your nose in it! So you think... Yeah, I think you've done something. Um, um, right. You might photograph your carpet, but you wouldn't photograph a beige carpet. So what are we saying? True or false? So I think it's false. False. You're saying it's a lie. OK, so, <laughs> uh, David, is it true or is it a lie? It is, in fact, true. <laughs> Well, uh, David, the obvious question. Would you, would you please whip it out and let us have yeah, a look? Absolutely. There we go. Oh, we, we have a close-up, actually. We've, and there it is. It's true. The, the screensaver on David's phone is a photo of his living room carpet. It's the first time an Ericsson's got a close-up of a bit of beige carpet since Sven went out with Ulrika. <laughs> Originally, David had a picture of his bed on his phone, but got embarrassed about his Hannah Montana duvet cover. <laughs> Ooh, possession. Oh, right, you're going to pick the box up then from under the desk? Well, you say box. Yeah, oh, sorry, the Ooh, tube, the tube. Yes. This is my wall map of the UK. I have marked every service station that I have ever visited on it. Oh, OK. I can so see him doing that. Yeah. It's from a man who was criticising somebody else for photographing a beige carpet. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Sorry, if, are, they, um, are they little stickers? Yes. Sorry? They're two colours of stickers. There are two colours what of stickers. What do they represent? The orange ones. Th these are the orange ones, the yeah. orange ones. Yeah. And I've also done blue ones. But why? Why? So I could differentiate between the two types of service stations. Why? What? I'm about to tell you. OK, well, come on. Just give me a second. <laughs> <clears throat> sometimes Lee likes to finish his own sentences, sometimes not. <laughs> They're basically do, two differentiating uh, service stations. <laughs> I use orange if I am heading north and blue if I'm heading south. Or if I'm heading west, I also go for blue. In east, I go for orange. Well, you have headed north a lot more than you've headed <laughs> west or east. I mean, how did you get back here? <laughs> There's about, they're actually equal if you count them. It looks like there are loads more orange. <laughs> uh, now, that one on the, in Scotland there, on the top... I can't believe you know where Scotland is, David. Well done. Near Inverness is one. That yeah, one there? That one there. Would reminisce about that. Uh, <laughs> do you know what I will? I will reminisce about yeah. that. Uh, I went in. I uh, went through to the main pasty area where I ordered my Ginster's pasty and uh, my say Aberdeen service so no station. It was absolutely the perfect temperature. Just what, this just, is really hurting just, my arm. OK, you Sorry. can put it down. One more question. Can we have a look? One more, have a look? Yeah. One more question, though. Well, no, you don't have to spoil can it you, with the details. Can you if you want to have a look, they can have a look. Yeah. Can they? Yeah. yeah. These are all motorway service. Yeah. Oh, you're all coming, are you? Well, I, you know. Yeah. 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 There's an F and a, an asterisk. What yes. do they denote? They, they denote they not fantastic. And the asterisk is... Uh, <laughs> there's not a word. Blows my mind. <laughs> Blows my mind, um, the asterisk. And how many years of touring <laughs> does this represent? Oh, it's not just touring. I'll do it when I'm on holiday. I'll do it wherever I go. Mm. You know when you said that there were about the same number of orange and blue? There's seven blues and 33 oranges. <laughs> You're going to be laughing on the other side of your face when in the next round I say, I am colourblind. <laughs> 
So, David, it's time to take a guess. Aberdeen service station doesn't ring true. It's definitely... I wonder, with the Aberdeen one, that's right outside Aberdeen. So you stop, you stop at a service station about six minutes after departing. If it's on empty, I stop and fill it up. Certainly, Which 33 I'll, I'll... times out of 40 happens when heading north. <laughs> yes, it's uphill. You could... <laughs> Lie, lie. You're saying lie, lie. quite conclusively. Uh, Lee, is it the truth or is it in fact a lie? It is in fact a lie. No, no. no. Good <laughs> it's a lie. That's not a <laughs> lie. Can I just say to the idiots that come up with these questions, as if it's not hard enough that I put little stickers on a map because I fill up and I like to get the thing. Oh no, how can we make it more harder? Well, I have four of them with blue on, one with an X and one with a bloody asterisk. <laughs> How the hell? of the Atlantic Ocean. <laughs> I was thrown out of a nightclub for refusing to stop dancing on a table. <laughs> <laughs> there we are. What was the name of the nightclub? It was called Cindy's. Cindy's. <laughs> <laughs> this is taking on a whole <laughs> new... <laughs> sort of... David couldn't think of a name and went, think of your dolls. Um... <laughs> Why were you on the table? What was the occasion? It was just... Uh, there was just a group of us went to this nightclub, uh, you know, on a Saturday night, I think, and got very pissed. When they said, please stop, yeah. what did you say back? What Hammer time! I think I was sort of, if you can imagine this, <laughs> in a slightly drunken state of self-righteousness. <laughs> And I sort of thought I wasn't doing any harm. What, uh, what kind of music were you into then? <laughs> yeah, we know, whatever was on. What? A quite fast what fox trot. What I mean, music? what are we talking about? <laughs> <laughs> this is going at some speed. I'm getting on the table. <laughs> no, it was, you know, it was, it was, it was pop music. When they was play pop music? <laughs> music is yeah. totally legitimate. It is not in the same category as talking about the hit parade. <laughs> I can say pop music without turning to tweed. <laughs> well, it's time to, to reach a decision here. Miranda, what is our decision? Well, I've seen David drunk many times, but I've never seen him dance before. So you're thinking it's a lie? I yeah. think it's a lie. It so I, has to be a lie. It's got to be a lie. I, I thought it was a lie when he said, once in a nightclub, I, yes, I'm a shutter yeah. went down. <laughs> you're saying it's a lie. Uh, David, is it the truth or is it a lie? It is a lie. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Last year, I was ordered to leave Blackpool Tower after I threw a sausage roll off the top. <laughs> How were you discovered? Did someone see you up... Security it... was at the top. And, they... and saw you... Why did you throw it? Well, because I'm a northern. And <laughs> I just thought the bin's over... You know, the bin was, was not it... inside. Why didn't you finish it? Because, actually, I'd already had one. This was my second. I was halfway through it and I thought, no more for me. Were they hot sausage rolls? <laughs> if you want, I'll give you the accurate heat of how they were. This hot. <laughs> Why did you throw it off the top? You're there, there's security there. It's a horrible thing to because do. Because someone, how fast is a hot or even quite hot sausage roll going to be moving by no, the time no, it you're hits wrong, some David. No, poor, no, 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 it wasn't morbidly quite hot. obese child I... down on the <laughs> promenade having a miserable time on holiday in Blackpool of all places, <laughs> and then you. He's just heard about the divorce but... of his parents, <laughs> consoling himself with another load of high sugar snacks, and the next thing he knows, a warmish sausage roll <laughs> hits him <laughs> slap in the face. <laughs> he's and now he's trying to eat the second sausage roll. <laughs> David. Let's yes. have a guess. Well, I don't... I, I don't... I, I don't think he would. I think it's a lie. I think we think this is a lie. Yeah. You're all agreed? Yes. It's a lie? It's a lie. OK. Lee, is it uh, the truth or is it a lie? It's actually a lie. <laughs> yes, it's a lie. Uh, Lee was not ordered to leave the Blackpool Tower after throwing a sausage roll off the top. As if anyone from the north would waste something wrapped in pastry. <laughs> I 
I read 1984 from cover to cover in W.H. Smith, so I didn't have to buy a copy. <laughs> Lee, do you believe that? When was this? It was, uh, I'd say, 1992. <laughs> so, <laughs> eight years after it came out. <laughs> <laughs> Did you knock on the door at 8.30 as they opened and you were in there till 5? Oh, this is good. Or did you pop in and read a no, bit of time? No, I read it in a, in a, uh, a series of, of lunch times. Did you find that later on in the afternoon you were really, really hungry? Uh, <laughs> I, I, grabbed, I grabbed a sandwich as well. Oh, you were, oh, you what, were eating what? and turning at the same time? No, no, no. <laughs> no you, can't, you can't eat sandwiches in W.H. Smith, you barbarian. <laughs> What was the name of Winston's girlfriend in 1984? It's uh, Julia, as in do it to Julia, isn't it? Yes, I think. <laughs> what, uh, what were you doing for a living in 1992? I, I, was, I was working uh, at a publisher's. Was it really badly paid? It was quite badly paid, but, I, you know, I dare say I could have stretched to a copy, actually. Why didn't but... you? Because I, I quite like the... the you routine. like the danger! <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm living on the edge, sweetheart! I'm nipping it to W.A. Smith and I ain't paying Absolutely. for it. Technically, <laughs> it technically isn't this. It's a type of shoplifting, but with intellectual property. <laughs> yeah. You're stealing thoughts. It's very 1984 in and of itself. I mm. like it. Thank you. <laughs> so, I don't know, what do we think? Well, in 1992, I was having it large. He was podium dancing. And he was reading bleeding books in his lunchtime. <laughs> it is weird enough to have done it. Let me ask you a question. What were you having that was so large? Everything. <laughs> Ch <laughs> smoke shake the lot. <laughs> <laughs> so, Lee, time for a guess. True. You're saying true. You're saying it's a lie. Lie. Who do I trust the most? <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be a jewel thief from Manchester who happened to get off. <laughs> no, I wasn't a jewel thief, was I? Yeah, definitely. Stick to that story. <laughs> Terry and say that's a lie. You're going to say it's a lie. OK, uh, David, is it a lie or were you telling the truth? It is a lie. Ah, well done. <laughs> it was a lie. Of course, the novel 1984 is where the term Big Brother comes from. The protagonist, Winston Smith, tries to overthrow a fascist regime by sitting in a room with Ulrika and the little one from Austin Powers. <laughs> I once picked up a hitchhiker and scared him so much he cried. <laughs> Do you believe him? Uh, where were you driving? I was going from, uh, I think it was from round Nor Norwich area, somewhere there. Round Norwich to... I presume somewhere between Norwich uh, and Yarmouth. How Yarmour. did you scare him? Um, well, what happened was we were driving along. He got in the car and he said... Uh, the first thing you he were said, driving along and he got in the car. Well, that's already yeah. dangerous. <laughs> well, He's sort of running to keep up. Yeah. It was an ice cream van. I sort of grabbed him by the hair yeah. and pulled him in. Yeah. That's how I used to get them. <laughs> and um, <laughs> my car used to have problems because it was a problem car. And uh, <laughs> I, pulled, I pulled over, right? I pulled over and I went round the back because I used to have to hit the engine to get it going again. And we, it all went wrong and we pulled over. So I said, I'm just getting in the back because I need to get a hammer to <laughs> give it a whack. And as I went back, I said, don't... I thought it'd be funny to say, don't worry, uh, I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> so I went round the back of the van and got a hammer out, went back to the front. And as I was walking past the front of the car where the engine lives, I looked in like that. And I just saw him go like that. And he just wiped a small tear from his eye because I think he genuinely thought, I'm going to kill him. And he was a bit worried. He, he <laughs> cried. That's a very odd response to immediate mortal danger. <laughs> to, to just slightly well up. That's more of a, that's I, I call that a more end of the it's a wonderful life reaction. <laughs> oh dear, I, I am to die, it appears. <laughs> Rather than, oh, get out of the car, run! But just notice the slight. A slight welling up. Ah, well, all things come to an end. <laughs> David, <laughs> what do you reckon, then? I think the stuff about like, having a dodgy car that he has to hit in a certain way with a hammer to get it going, I think that side of it... Well, let's just leave it at true. that, then. <laughs> That's the bit of it that doesn't ring true to oh, me. Flannel. Larry, um, what, what do you say? I mean, you've got a good flannel detector. Would you... Would you yeah, uh, I, I, think, I, think, yeah, I think it is. I think it's flannel. I think... Well, I, I actually... It, I oh think dear. it might be slightly true, true but oh I'm going to go... I don't... I'm not convinced it's true, so I'm going to go with the team and we'll say it's a lie. Not going to rock the boat. No. OK. Uh, Lee Mack. I say that it is indeed the truth. Oh, <laughs> it's true. Uh, Lee did once pick up a hitchhiker 
and scared him so much that he cried. Even Lee now admits it probably wasn't a good idea to shut him in the boot with the other hitchhikers. <laughs> As a child, at my grandparents' house, I had a little bell that I would ring if I wanted anything. <laughs> Why did you have a bell? Well, there was a bell. It was a pre-existent bell. There was a bell in the house, and I liked it. Mm. Only at the grandparents' house? Yes. Not at home? Because no. your parents didn't no. play that shit. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> at, the ho at home, you just sort of went... <laughs> and... <laughs> so how six, old were you? About six. What were the things you wanted when you rang the bell? More chips. <laughs> uh, a glass of orange squash. Sense of purpose in life. <laughs> was it both grandmother and grandfather that would come and wait on you hand and foot, or was it just one or the other? Uh, I was a small child. I was sort of, <laughs> I was indulged to a certain extent, but then also to a certain extent there was. Can you actually just stop ringing your bell now? <laughs> okay. So, Lee's team, what what do you think? The parents I... could easily have had a bell, and the little brat could have just. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I liked the bell. <laughs> I liked ringing the bell. He liked ringing the bell. Is it true or is it a lie? <laughs> Reginald, delicious hunter. <laughs> um, well, sausage roll, I believe that... <laughs> I believe that there's a simplicity to the story that uh, rings true. I'll go with that. Go on, then. We'll say that that's true. You're saying it's true. David, is it true or is it a lie? Well, it is, in fact, true. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. Yes, it's true. As a child, David's grandparents' house did have a little bell that he would ring if he wanted anything. Ding-a-ling! Ah, uh, could I have a posher upbringing, please? <laughs> he, um... That's, that's a remarkable impression, because it has the advantage of also sounding quite a lot like Ken Livingston. I thought that was a good one. <laughs> You're absolutely right. As yeah. I did it, I thought, this isn't the best David Mitchell I've ever done. Right. <laughs> if it was going to be one of the good David Mitchells, it'd be a bit more like this. I don't know why anybody would think I would do that. Why would they think that? <laughs> and I'll tell you another thing. <laughs> Possession. Ah, well, you have to reach under your desk and lift out your box. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Yeah? This is a letter rejecting me from a job at McDonald's. <laughs> please, what do you reckon? Could you read it out to us, please, David? <clears throat> Reference CM1156-P. <laughs> Dear David, thank you for your recent application to work at the Abingdon branch. Unfortunately, at this time, your application has not been successful. Thank you for your interest in our company. Yours sincerely. Um, Martin Danks. And when was it dated, please? It's dated the 19th of July, 1990. And you will have been... I will have been... Mortified. Uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I never really bounced back from that. Yeah. Um, I, was, I would have been just Stupid. 16. Does that add up, Carol? He's, he's 52. <laughs> <laughs> At heart, yes. Well, <laughs> I don't want to bring back unhappy memories for you, but what did you feel you could have brought to the company? <laughs> A certain nervous energy. <laughs> uh, a, a culinary snobbishness that is lacking. <laughs> it's lacking. Uh, a, a fear of interacting with customers. <laughs> and an equal fear of frying chips. I think, though, I think Dave could have closed them down just by having people come and go, Gives a burger, you don't want a burger, my friend. <laughs> I would n not at that age have had the confidence to refer to someone as my friend in that way. Why? Don't look at my face. <laughs> what do you think, Carol? I You're don't think. It, no, I think it's a lie, but I don't want to sway you on this because we need the points. I reckon he's kept it. He's a peculiar mystery. Look at him. Yeah. <laughs> this is why I do don't like people looking at my face. <laughs> So, Lee, you're saying... I have to say that I think that's probably... True, it's true, it's true, it's true. it's a lie. I say it's a lie. You're saying it's a lie? OK, David, time to own up. It is, in fact, a lie. Oh. Oh. Nice work, Lee. Nice work. Yeah. It's a lie. Because David has never even been to McDonald's, although of he was. I've, of course I've been to McDonald's. <laughs> 
joke is, he went to visit Lee. <laughs> <laughs> Can I please be allowed to read the auto cue Sorry. joke? Okay. <laughs> David has never even been. Although he was once mildly tempted to pop in and sample their short-lived McPhezant zinger. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Good work. Now oh, characterising you as the joke computer. <laughs> Lee. I once picked up a hitchhiker and scared him so much he cried. <laughs> David, do you believe him? Uh, where were you driving? I was going from, uh, I think it was from round Nor Norwich area, somewhere there. Round Norwich, too. I presume somewhere between Norwich uh, and Yarmouth. How did you scare him? Um, well, what happened was we were driving along. He got in the car and he said, uh, the first thing you he said... You were driving along and he got in the car. Well, that's already yeah. dangerous. <laughs> He's sort of running to keep up. Yeah. It was an ice cream van. I sort of grabbed him by the hair yeah. and pulled him in. Yeah. That's how I used to get them. And um, <laughs> my car used to have problems because it was a problem car. And uh, <laughs> I, pulled, I pulled over, right? I pulled over and I went round the back because I used to have to hit the engine to get it going again. And we, it all went wrong and we pulled over. So I said, I'm just getting in the back because I need to get a hammer to give it a whack, and as I went back, I said, don't... I thought it'd be funny to say, don't worry, uh, I'm not going to kill you. <laughs> so I went round the back of the van and got a hammer out, went back to the front, and as I was walking past the front of the car where the engine lives, I looked in like that, and I just saw him go like that, and he just wiped a small tear from his eye, because I think he genuinely thought, I'm going to kill him, and he was a bit worried. He, Maybe he cried. <laughs> That's a very odd response to immediate mortal danger. <laughs> Slightly well up. That's more of a, I, I, I call that a more end of the. It's a wonderful life reaction. <laughs> oh dear, I, I am to die. It appears. <laughs> Rather than oh, get out of the car, run. But just notice the slight, a slight welling up. Ah well, all things come to an end. <laughs> David, <laughs> what do you reckon then? I think the stuff about like, having a dodgy car that he has to hit in a certain way with a hammer to get it going, I think that side of it... Well, let's just leave it at true. that, then. <laughs> That's the bit of it that doesn't ring true to me. Uh, flannel. Larry, um, what, what do you say? I mean, you've got a good flannel detector. Would you... Would you yeah, uh, I, I think... I think, I think yeah, I think it is. I think it's flannel. I think... Well, I, I don't actually... It, I oh think it might be slightly true, true but oh I'm going to go... I don't... I'm not convinced it's true, so I'm going to go with the team and we'll say it's a lie. Not going to rock the boat. No. OK. Uh, Lee Mack. I say that it is indeed the truth. Oh. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Lee did once pick up a hitchhiker and scared him so much that he cried. Even Lee now admits it probably wasn't a good idea to shut him in the boot with the other hitchhikers. 